All right, guys, fantasy bros, welcome back to the Fantasy Football Astrology channel. This is 2021. We're heading into week two, and I've got my top waiver picks I'm going to throw at you guys, okay? Uh, just a heads up about this list. Guys, I take this list from my main league, okay? And I'm taking all the players that are available. If you see some guys like a Jacoby Myers not on the list, well, he's not available in my league, so I didn't include him. So by no means is this an end-all, be-all list, okay? This is just a list of some of the more basic guys that we need to know and some of the deeper guys that I don't think you're going to be getting on any other channel. So uh, if you stay tuned into my channel here, you know that I pride myself on trying to give you guys something a little unique, something to think about that's different that other people aren't really talking about. And so without further ado, we'll just get through. We'll start at the top of the list here. Mark Ingram as a Sagittarius. Uh, 26 carries or something. We have to take that reasonably serious, guys. Uh, he's available in pretty much any league. And uh, the Texans uh, looked really good in the preseason, I thought. with their They've been shifting and rotating a lot of guys. They're keeping everybody really fresh. It's an interesting approach that they're using over there. It's a lot different. And so I don't know if Mark Ingram's going to be the guy going forward or if they're going to give it to uh, another running back next week. But and the Jaguars are weak, but still, Mark Ingram, uh, we got to value running backs really high because they're so rare if they do produce. And, um, and he was equal in efficiency with his other guys. So Mark Ingram, top of the list. Um, get him if you can. Uh, is he worth a waiver pick? That's something for you to determine. Uh, I don't like to use waiver picks. I don't really see anybody on this list I would use a waiver pick for. But once again, this is uh, up for you to determine uh, how bad do you need a running back, how bad do you need certain situations. So uh, moving on here to Elijah Mitchell uh, as a Taurus, uh, working with Kyle Shanahan as a Sagittarius. Not much of an astrological uh, influence or, or something to talk about there, but still he was very efficient with the football. Uh, Trey Sermon I don't think has been that efficient. Uh, he's even fumbled. Um, in the preseason, he wasn't looking that great. So get your hands on Elijah Mitchell if he can, okay? Uh, number three, Sterling Shepard. You'll notice I have Sterling Shepard a lot higher than a lot of guys I think would probably have them. He had nine targets, seven catches for about 113 yards and a touchdown, I believe. So uh, a lot of targets there, high efficiency. And guys, the astrology is really there with Sterling Shepard, okay? I've been waiting for this guy to emerge for a long time. Is this the year? Well, uh, he's definitely worth a bench stash at this point and uh, really good astrology once again. So I love to see that. Okay, moving on to Christian Kirk as a Scorpio. Uh, you guys probably are well aware. Uh, five catches for 70 yards, two touchdowns, and a uh, perfect day uh, for Christian Kirk. Uh, he's one of these talents that uh, even though his astrology isn't there with either his head coach or with Kyler Murray, because they're both Leo and he's a Scorpio, that's not a great thing. But what is a great thing is he's just so athletically gifted. We have to take Christian Kirk seriously if he's starting to emerge. Uh, it's probably going to take Ronda more some time. A.J. Green is probably the writings on the wall with A.J. Green. If he's not going to be the main guy there, he'll, he'll start getting faded again if he's not as athletically gifted as somebody like Christian Kirk really is and always has been for a while now. So really like Christian Kirk here. Moving on, Cedric Wilson. You probably won't see him being talked about on a lot of channels, but guys, this Cedric Wilson guy, you probably saw Thursday night, that guy running around with jersey number one. He looks really good, tall, lanky, quick, and he has really good chemistry with the offensive coordinator over there. Okay, Kellen Moore. So he, he's a water sign as well. So they're, they get along great, which is wonderful. And so that's what you have in Cedric Wilson. Um, really like him, especially if you, you need help with Michael Gallup's injury there. <clears throat> Moving on to number six, Jameis Winston. Probably the only quarterback I see on the waiver wire worth picking up. Guys, if you haven't seen Jameis Winston this year, he looks like a different guy. Um, he looks uh, a bit slimmer. He looks like he's in better shape. He's had LASIK eye surgery. He's been throwing lasers. And one thing people haven't been talking about enough, I think, that I picked up on from two days ago was that he was really fast on his feet. He put up 37 yards, okay? So um, I, he's never struck me as a fast quarterback, but 
two days ago, he struck me as a really uh, actually mobile guy. So he's being really careful with the ball. And that Saints defense has looked even better, I think, than advertised. So that's a good thing. He's going to get more opportunities because of that. There's a lot of things to like. And think about when Michael Thomas comes back and Traquan Smith gets healthy, then you're looking at an even more explosive situation for Jameis Winston. Get your hands on him if you can. Okay, Cole Komet, number seven. Guys, I've been talking about Cole Komet uh, in a couple of videos already, and uh, he's got super good astrology with Andy Dalton, and Andy Dalton, for however long Andy Dalton's going to be a starter, uh, he loved targeting Tyler Eifert, if you guys remember that back in Cincinnati. Also, Matt Nagy is uh, from the Kansas City system, and they've been designing, they have a lot of Kansas City, like Travis Kelsey, like outs, where that tight end will break off into the flat, and you're doing like opposite motions to each side of the field. So Cole Komet is being designed to be used more, and you saw it in his usage. Uh, he had quite a few targets, I think he had at least five, just going off the top of my head here, but there's a lot to be encouraged about as far as the usage factor with Cole Komet, okay? Um, and the astrology. There's so much to like with Cole Komet. All right. Uh, Dalton Schultz, uh, I think if you watched the game, I thought it was pretty clear. He looked like the better tight end. Uh, how long will it be until they fade Blake Jarwin into the distance? Uh, remains to be seen. But Dalton Schultz had more targets, more production. And on that offense, gosh, we want to get any piece we, any active piece we can from that offense. Um, I mean, they faced against Tampa Bay guys, and, and, you know, Dak Prescott still threw for, you know, unbelievable amounts of yards and was 400 yards. Unbelievable. Okay. Coming in at number nine, Kenneth Gainwell as a Pisces. Doesn't really have an astrological advantage over Miles Sanders, but I watched the game, guys. I can tell you he looks like the more aggressive runner. They want to use this guy on the goal line. Uh, they want to use him on short yardage situations. He runs more like a sledgehammer. Miles Sanders is more like a finesse-looking guy. So I think um, he's already got a, a, some favoritism just the way he runs. Um, he's a, just a more physical guy. We want, especially if we have Miles Sanders, we want to cuff Kenneth Gainwell, okay? And number 10, kind of an honorable mention here, I put in Alan Lazard. Uh, he out-snapped uh, pretty much every receiver. He only played one less snap than Devonte Adams. They were using him a lot. And uh, we expected really strong bounce back from Green Bay this week playing the Lions. Jeff Okuda just went down with an injury. So um, Alan Lazard, he's an interesting kind of uh, matchup uh, start here. And if he's the second receiver in Green Bay, that is the type of production uh, that we're going to be looking forward to. All right, guys, these are just 10 names, a few names. There's so many plays. Let me know in the comments what plays you guys think are interesting that you want to make, that you want to talk about. And uh, cheers, guys.